Hey and welcome back. I'm going to try and make a tool that most people with a mill are probably going to end up making at some point, and that's going to be a stop, or I guess a vice stop. They're pretty simple parts to make, and what they do more or less is add a stop to your vice. Let's say for example, I wanted to machine this piece of aluminium. I'll line it up with the end of the vice jaws and then indicate it in. Now if I took the part out in order to flip it, or say I'm machining 10 of these and they need to be all identical, I could then use the end of the jaws as my reference. However, with small parts like this, it's not a great idea to have it clamped on just one side of the vise like this. It's not going to clamp evenly and it's not going to remain parallel. That's clamped up pretty tightly on the stock and as I'm moving it, I can feel the other side of the jaw moving. As a result, it's always best to clamp in the middle, unless you have a piece of identical stock that you can jam on the other side to make it clamp evenly. Of course though, clamping with the piece in the middle, you can't use the end of the jaws as a reference stop, and that's where mine will come in. Now like many of these things, there's going to be many ways of doing this, and there's many great videos of other people showing off their methods. Some people like to mount theirs directly to their vices, but I'm going to make mine mounted to the table, and hopefully that should make it a bit more versatile. I'll start off with a piece of 25mm bar stock, and I'll just cut off a small piece and clean it up. It really doesn't need to be all that big. With the part now cleaned up, I'll now drill a 10mm hole for a cap head screw and that will mount it to the table. Now I don't currently have a counterboring tool for an M10 cap head screw, so I'll have to do the counterbore manually. And finally, I'll drill and tap a hole for M8. And that is the base part complete. Now connecting to the base will be two arms, which I'll make from some mild steel.
Now the 32mm stock that I'm using is a little bit big for the job, so what I'll do is I'll use the face mill to take about 10mm off the side. On one piece, I'm going to drill through two 8mm holes. I'll then round off each end. Now personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this method, so I'll use this method to do the roughing, and then I'll take it to its final shape using some hand filing. The other piece will be made almost exactly the same, except one hole will be drilled blind and then tapped for M8. I'm also going to drill and tap a hole in the end of the part for a grub screw. And with the basic parts now made, we can now do a quick test fit. The arms bolt to each other, and they bolt to the base in order to make the vice stop. And to act as our adjustable stop, I'll be using this old boring bar that broke. So far I'm pretty happy with it, and I could probably bolt it to the mill and then call it a day. But one thing I would like to do first is harden it. Because I made the part from mild steel, it is quite soft, and in the short time it's taken to make the part, it has picked up quite a few scratches and dings. I am planning on using this for many years to come, so what I'd like to do is harden it, and that should hopefully make it a little bit more durable. Before I start to harden it, I will clean up all the parts to remove any scratches. I'll now set up the parts in order to case harden them. I'm choosing to case harden them because the mild steel that I used just doesn't have enough carbon in it to quench harden them. So what I have to do first is raise the carbon content and then I can quench them. The parts get sealed in a packing box full of charcoal and sodium carbonate and the top will get coated in a thin film of kiln cement.
The box gets placed in a furnace for about an hour or so, and that should give the carbon some time to diffuse into the outer shell of the steel. Now here's where I made a small mistake. Instead of letting it cool down in the packing box and then reheating it with the parts covered in a protective flux, which is what I normally do, I opened up the box and then dumped everything directly into a bucket of brine. The resulting parts are now glass hard and they will need to be tempered back, but they're also now covered in a scale which will also need to be cleaned off. Also, dropping the packing box into the brine was also a pretty big mistake because I'm guessing the fast and probably uneven cooling rate created a massive crack in the sidewall. I guess it really does go to show just how much energy is involved in trying to heat these parts up. The last thing to do is cut down the boring bar to remove the damaged section. And that is the part done. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think the stop bar could be a little bit longer, by maybe an inch or so. I would turn up a replacement, but the lathe is currently taken apart for a future project, so I'm going to have to stick with this one for the moment. The stop itself though works great. It's very rigid and very easy to set up. Plus, I'm able to use it with other vices or even on other machines. Overall, I'm really happy with how this project turned out, and I think you could easily make one of these in a few hours or so with very little materials. Definitely a fun project, and one that I would definitely recommend. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.